Welcome to On The Bubble Podcast, episode 63. I'm your host, Sabasa J. Wade, and with me is my co-host, Yuki Lee Bender. And Yuki, right now you're where exactly? Right now I'm in Dallas. We're recording on, what is it? I guess Wednesday, March 13th. Um, so I'm here playing. I thought I was going to play the Battle Hardened. Then I realized the Battle Hardened is Blitz. So, but I'll play the PTI event. Um, that one CC, and I'll be doing some draft practice. And my girlfriend lives here, so it's I don't know, easy to visit, have somewhere to stay, and uh, flights to LA were really expensive. It was like the same price to go from Vancouver to Dallas, Dallas to LA, then LA to back home. I think it was like twenty dollars more. I was just like, I can play a Battle Hardened, which turns out to only be a PTI event that I'm interested in, but I don't know, pretty worth it. You're not gonna just borrow a deck from somebody and play Blitz, or like you—you you have Kano, don't you? K- Kano, Kano, Living Legend. Kano, Living Legend, and Blitz. Yeah, like so many decks, Living Legend. Like K- Kano's Living Legend, Ira's Living Legend, Icelander's Living Legend. Like I don't know, a bunch of decks are Living Legend. You don't want to randomly just like jam Ko into Blitz. I hear that like Reinar is real good in Blitz right now, which kind of makes sense. He got a bunch of support. He was already kind of good at just like killing people and he's probably even better at it now. I don't know if I want to go play a bunch of Blitz Reinar mirrors that I haven't practiced at all. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I guess uh, we didn't mention our topic for today yet, but our topic for today is going to be about mental game. So what we can do during the game, what can do, what can we do to improve our mental game after the game? Basically, anything we can think about about the mental game that that we can talk about in one episode, honestly. But before we do that, did you do? Did you play any RTNs last weekend? No, <laughs> I was going to. So I, I was going to go to an RTN with Jay draft RTN, and it turned out that I was just like really exhausted and had some other things come up and couldn't really go. So I ended up not. Uh, going to that one it was a bit of a commitment to go it was like what like two and a half three hours away so i didn't end up playing more rtns and i've kind of just been focused on like cc testing and resting up i've noticed that i'm just really exhausted and very low energy because it's been so busy with the painting and moving which is thankfully now all done but between that and like travel and everything it's just like i'm pretty run down and i think that while testing is important and has been a big part of my focus also just like sleeping enough eating okay kind of like feeling good i think is like pretty important going into the tournament because if you don't feel you don't feel good it's hard to do well i don't know if jay agrees though because like i know you sometimes don't sleep that much for events (laughs) no i i typically just run as much events or as much things as i can do in a day and then don't sleep at all the last like three rtns i've played i basically didn't sleep um one of my one of our friends mateo was in town and whenever he's in town we end up playing poker all night until like 4 a.m or 6 a.m or sometimes 8 a.m and then you know it becomes a saturday and then saturday mornings are when rtns are so we just like take a one hour nap and then go straight into rtns yep sounds like jay personally i can't do it I find that like having a good sleep and feeling rested and feeling good for the event is like super super important for me doing well. But um, I don't know, it seems to work out okay for you guys. I know that so you you did end up going and playing the RTN. Um, how'd you do? How did that go? Uh, I ended up top eighting that RTN. I lost the first round of top eight. Uh, I ended up drafting Betsy in the last draft, and the person directly to my left was also in Betsy. My My first game, I basically lost with, like, my opponent having two cards left in their deck or something like that. So it was a very close game, Guardian versus Warrior. I kind of needed, like, two to three more, like, Guardian three blocks and should have been okay. But I didn't have that, so I ended up losing that game. My deck was kind of sick, though, because, like, I pack one, pick one, good time, chapeau. And then I had, like, the full Warrior equipment suite with the Gauntlet, the Vigor Earth, and the Leg Piece. I had two pints to make the leg piece playable, and I also had the Stonewall Impasse as my shield. So basically, like, I had kind of close to the ideal Betsy deck, but I'm just, like, missing two to three more cards to be able to, like, fatigue everyone out. 
so I had to try and win by damage, but the warrior player, because they have attack reactions, can block out my overpowered, so it was like not the ideal first round opponent, and then unfortunately I ended up uh, decking out first. Right. Sounds like you had a pretty good deck, but you just uh, couldn't quite get there, which does happen. Like sometimes you draft a good deck, but you just, you still don't win. Yeah, it's like I think like my deck was like a 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10. It was just like physically missing cards that are in the guardian class that's like put like mm-hmm. cards i can physically put into my deck i had like 31 playables right and i needed like 33 to win that game mm-hmm. yeah it was close it was close i my mistake was like we were talking about like trying to be open last week and then i didn't realize that the person directly to my left was a guardian forcer uh, after the event i was talking with the uh, with a couple of people who was like, in my car and they're just like oh yeah he like played guardian round like on the first draft and then he forced like a double miller's grindstone guardian on the second draft and i'm like oh man i wish i like did a little bit more like scouting so that i know that this guy was gonna force guardian in my draft so then Maybe I could have, like, picked up the Good Time Chapeau and not went into Betsy. Uh, so enough about that. Do you want to talk about the Patreon before we start our main topic? Yeah, so still seeing new folks joining the Patreon and contributing each and every week in the Discord. Thank you so much to everybody who supports us. It really does mean a lot to us and, and really helps us make the show and, and be able to put as much as we are into it. Um, I've also been doing a bunch of extra content on there for the Titanium Bobble tiers, and, and that's been you know made possible by you, the patrons. So uh, we appreciate all of our listeners, but those of you who can give back, we also really do appreciate it. It means a lot to us. If you want to check out our Patreon, you can at patreon.com slash on the bobble. Ready for our main topic? Yeah. Um, so actually, our main topic was actually suggested by a Patreon of ours. Uh, thank you, Seth11, or Bart. I'm not sure which name you like better on here, but uh, he says, hey, can we maybe do an episode about mindset, improving mindset, what to avoid to keep a good mindset. When I'm winning, I feel good and don't make any mistakes. When I start losing, I feel like I'm the worst player in the world and get insecure and start making bad mistakes and get concentration problems. And then he says, I can't be the only one, right? And yeah, I agree with you, Seth. Like, I also go into these, like, really bad loopholes. Not loopholes. Rabbit hole? Yeah, it's a rabbit hole. Uh, Rabbit hole of, like, once I make a mistake and, like, start making mistakes, it makes me make even more mistakes and so on and so on. So today we want to talk about, like, how do we improve our mental game? And, like, what do you do for, you know, keeping your mental game up in even, like, the smaller events like RTNs? Or bigger events like the Pro Tour. Where do you want to start, Yuki? So let's just start by saying, like, I think a lot of this is very kind of personal. The way that your brain works is not exactly the same as the way anyone else's brain works. So we're going to give some suggestions. Um, but, you know, feel free to try them out. But but do what works for you. So if you try a strategy out and it's not working for you, don't do it. If something works really well for you, do that strategy. Um, it, it is very, I think it is quite personal. So we can maybe give some advice, but um, but yes, this idea of like having losses affect you and you're, you know, you have some like negative self-talk, you feel insecure, your mistakes start to spiral, you don't concentrate, that that's super, super normal. And everybody experiences this actually. The good news is that um, if you're aware of it and you, kind of practice dealing with it, you can, I don't want to say avoid it entirely, but you can be, you can get better at not getting into this mindset and and kind of avoiding this and 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 making good decisions or better decisions even when you do make those mistakes. So, so I think there's a lot of work to be done here, but it's also like, it takes practice and it takes um, effort. And it, just because you listen to this episode doesn't mean it's eventually, it's going to immediately go all, all, like it's not all going to go away right away. It will take some time to um, to work on. I think a lot of what this patron has kind of mentioned is what I would describe as tilt. Do do you agree that like most of this is kind of covered under tilt? Yeah, that's that's I think that's the best way to describe the mental game part of of TCG. Honestly, is to how to deal with tilt. Yeah, tilt 
Um, for anybody, I'm sure many of you are familiar, but for anybody not familiar, uh, what is Tilt and where does it come from, Jay? Hmm, that's actually a good question. I don't know where it comes from. I would, I would assume it's a poker term because it's yeah. uh, it's a TCG. Like everything derived from TCGs always stems from either Magic the Gathering or poker. Mm-hmm. Um, but basically, what Tilt is is when your mental game isn't on the best state, I guess. And you start to make mistakes, and that mistake start to feed into other mistakes. And when you're on tilt, you typically keep on making mistakes that you would normally not make. So that's basically what tilt is. Yeah, and there's often this kind of like spiraling effect where, you know, you make a bad decision, you get frustrated, you're not thinking clearly, you're prone to making more bad decisions, which in turn gets you more frustrated, and it kind of starts this like, you know, this um, downward spiral where you keep making worse decisions, you keep getting more tilted, and and at some point you might not be making good decisions at all. And I think in general, like, the higher the stakes are, the easier it is to get tilted because there's more, there's more pressure, there's more on the line, so you kind of beat yourself up more. You might, for a lot of people, they might not get tilted, you know, playing at their kitchen table or maybe even playing armory, but maybe if it's like a road to nationals or a pro quest, they get tilted a little bit easier. And then if it's like a top eight of a road to nationals or pro quest, like even more so. And then if it's like a calling, like, you know, the t- tilt can really come out. So I think often it's kind of tied to how much pressure we put on ourselves and like kind of how big the event is. And it's a lot of like, I think it stems from wanting to do well and being frustrated with, you know, not not doing well. Yeah, usually tilt comes from like being mad at yourself more than anything else. Um, or like you getting unlucky is like an easy way to get tilted as well. So there are like things you can't control that can get you tilted and you just need to understand that like you you need to understand for yourself if it's if you get tilted when you get unlucky or if you get tilted when you play bad yourself or you know like the reason why you get tilted is very important to figuring out what you can do for yourself to improve your mental game. Yeah, so I think we're going to talk about kind of two main things on this topic. The first one is kind of related to what Jay talks was t- was just talking about, and it's avoiding getting tilted in the first place. Because I think that often, often once you get tilted, if, if you're tilted enough, it's it's kind of hard um, to deal with in the moment. We'll, we will talk about strategies for that, but I think a lot of the work you can do is in avoiding getting to that place where you're just like fully tilted. That doesn't mean you never get frustrated by your mistakes, but you can avoid for going to that really negative place where you're not able to think clearly anymore. Um, I think a good strategy, like Jay said, is what are the things that are prone to tilting you? If you can identify them, that's really helpful so that you kind of know what kinds of situations might get you tilted. And that way you can kind of catch it early as it's, as it's starting to creep in before it's fully blown. Um, another thing you can do is pay attention to what does it feel like when I'm get- getting tilted. Um, I usually feel kind of like flushed um, or like like uh, like I might feel like warm um, or kind of like I might be like sweating or like a little bit shaky um, so that you can feel like those like physical sensations come on um, when you're feeling tilted. And a lot of that is like a, a stress response uh, from your brain. The other thing I think is, for me at least, is pay attention to your self-talk. Usually, like Jay said, a lot of this is being mad at yourself, and there might be things that you are saying to yourself. Um, In our patrons example, they kind of mentioned they feel like they're the worst player in the world, Um, and then they get insecure and start making bad mistakes. So maybe what you start, start doing is go, I shouldn't have made that mistake. I'm such a bad player. How could I have done that? why did I do that? That was so stupid, right? There might be like common types of things that you say to yourself when you're tilted and and identifying what those things are is really important because you can start as once you start thinking them, you can go, wait, I'm starting to get tilted. I need to, you know, dial that back a little bit. Do you have any examples of things like you sometimes say say to yourself when you get tilted, Jay? For myself, it's more of I I know I'm starting to tilt when I'm thinking about past plays rather than my future plays. So it's like a turn cycle back. I'm thinking about, oh, hmm, why did I block with a test of strength instead of, you know, like, why did I block the test of strength on the first attack instead of waiting for the second attack? And like, 
by the time I'm already thinking about my past plays, I already know that I'm regretting that play. And I'm trying to like either justify myself or get myself to recognize that that was a bad play. And by the time I'm not thinking about my next play, I already know that I'm like, I'm I'm starting to tilt because I'm not thinking about what I'm trying to do next. I'm I'm thinking of like what what I did earlier, which you can't even change what you did earlier anymore. So like thinking about plays that you did earlier in the turn is like kind of not useless, but like it's counter counterproductive. I think that might be the best way of saying it. And and that's typically when I find myself that I'm like starting to tilt is like. I'm thinking about past plays instead of future plays. That's that's the biggest one, I think. Yeah, and I think this is quite common for competitive players who want to get better because you you're looking for your mistakes, you're trying to learn from your mistake, and and that's useful. But the time for it is not during the game, right? Uh, the time for it is is after the game when you can reflect on it. If you're if you're thinking about your previous turn, you're probably not thinking as much about your current turn, which is the one that. You know, I think I think if you ask anybody, like, what should you be thinking about in order to give yourself the best chance of winning, it's probably thinking about your current turn and maybe your future turns, not your previous turn. So yeah, I, I really like that kind of like ident- identifying that kind of thought process and realizing that that means you're probably a little bit tilted, and that maybe you can kind of redirect that energy and 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 start focusing more on the the current game. I don't know about you, but I know that I do this and I know that some other people do this. Um, I I often kind of come up with things to say to myself. These can be almost like prepared lines that you say to yourself um, if you notice that you're getting tilted or you notice that you make a mistake. Um, For me, a lot of this is just kind of like, I kind of remind myself like, okay, I made a mistake. What can I do from this point that I'm in? Like I'm in this position. How do I give myself the best chance of winning? And I'm just going to focus on doing everything very methodically and kind of just playing like one play at a time. I'm not even thinking about like the next turn or whatever, like not, not to say that doesn't cross my mind, but just being like very intentional of like, I'm going to pitch my, I'm going to play my card, pitch my resources in this order, and then I'm going to play this card and so on and so forth. And really focus on just like all of the small details. And for me, that's very um, kind of grounding, I guess it sort of like resets my focus to the, immediate game rather than um the other things swirling on in my head yeah i think that's a that's a really good method um what i typically do would be like to try and maximize the value of that turn and just like making sure that i'm doing the best play on this current turn and so like if i find myself that i'm like thinking about my past plays i'll be like no stop stop thinking about that what is the best play I can do right now? And then make sure that I do the right play this turn. So then the tilt doesn't start to like spiral down essentially. Because the worst thing to do is like to make a mistake the turn before and then make a mediocre play on the current turn. Then you'll start thinking about all, all the plays in the past, like, you know, two, three turns. And you're like, man, I keep on making these mistakes. The easiest way to stop yourself is to just make the best play on that current turn, on the current turn that you're thinking of right now. So then that can't tilt you anymore. Even if that means like taking an extra minute or two to just like think about the turn and make sure you're doing the right play. Yeah, absolutely. And if you find it's like hard to get yourself out of that like past perspective where you're thinking about your mistakes, another thing you can do is like, like Jay said, take a minute maybe take some deep breaths. Um, Deep breaths do help you kind of calm down. Um, I'm not good enough with like psychology stuff, but I know that it's like, it's like scientifically a thing that deep breaths help you calm down. Another thing you can do to ground yourself if you, if you need to, if you're finding like your heads elsewhere and you can't focus is um, you can kind of focus on something that you can hear around you, something you can see around you and something that you can feel. And just kind of like very quickly, like I'm noticing there's like this person here, I'm hearing somebody say this and I don't know, just like some physical sensation. It could even just be like, you know, you touch your shirt and what is the texture of that shirt? And just like focusing on that sort of like sensations that you have in the moment is kind of taking you away from that 
the the mental stuff that's going on and and then and then of course refocusing on the game which is ultimately what you want to be thinking about but but sometimes giving yourself a bit of a reset can be um can be like an effective grounding strategy do you know a thing that i find that most people don't do that i i don't know why people don't do it is like nobody typically stands up from their seat and like you know, just reset down. Just, just like take a take a step back and then just come back to your seat. I don't know why people don't do that. Like, like what I typically do is like when I really need to start to focus and like make sure my game is like right. I I would flip my chair around and then just sit sit on my chair backwards. Sometimes I don't know if you've ever seen me do that before, but like that's something that I would like consciously make a decision to do is to flip my chair around and and just like sit so that I can lean into the chair. So then I like change my posture before I start making my next play. I, I have seen you done some variations of this before and um, often something I do. Oh, I can so hear the dog. Oh no. <laughs> what is he what does he want? <laughs> so another thing that I know sometimes tilts people. Um, I, I've learned mostly to not let this tilt me, but um, a common one is just randomness being frustrating you draw all reds or you draw a bunch of non-blocks or you play your wild ride and you have a bunch of cards in hand and your deck doesn't have many whiffs and then you miss and then your turn ends you know um that that kind of like variance can be can be tilting and can be a source of frustration i think for me a big thing to kind of like avoid getting frustrated by variance or getting tilted by variance is just like really focusing on the things i can control so that's my future decisions. So not previous mistakes I've made, not what cards on top of my deck, not what die I roll, but making good decisions, even if the outcome is bad. Like not, not focusing on the result, but focusing on I made a good decision. I got unlucky. It happens. Um, and that really helps me. For me, I just try to avoid even just playing those cards in general because like I hate just being in a spot where I have to hit on these like RNG based cards. So I just like stopped playing wild rides. I stopped, you know, I don't play brute for that reason in CC. Um, and I already, I already know that that is like a source of a, that's going to be a sort randomness is going to be a source of me tilting. So I just like don't play cards or decks that have too much RNG in them. Um, and that's that's how I prevent myself from going on tilt from those cards. It's just I avoid them altogether. Yeah, it, sometimes you can avoid playing those cards. Like in limited, you can avoid playing those cards. You can also build your deck in ways or pick decks that are more consistent. But but I think no matter what, like you always have some of that variance, right? So so one strategy is definitely to reduce the variance in your games through deck selection, through drafting, through all of that. But also just um, I think focusing on the decisions that you make rather than, you know, the luck of like my opponent drew three blood rush fellows. Like it happens. Sometimes people run hot. Sometimes you run hot, and and that's that's okay. So just focusing on like what you can actually control, which is often your tournament prep, your deck selection, your decision making, um, those kinds of things, rather than the things that you can control, like the variance of your draws or your opponent's draws, or um, even the outcome of the game right like you you have influence over the outcome of the game but you ultimately can't control it and there are some games that you probably just lose because of you know maybe the way that your deck lines up into theirs maybe there just wasn't a way to win that game that is that is sometimes the case and just reminding yourself of that can sometimes help deal with potentially being tilted by that yep that's true that is true the thing that tilts me the most is typically like a bad judge call and then if you lose because of a really bad judge call, oh, that's that's number one tilt factor for me. Can't control that either. <laughs> yeah, completely out of your control. And, and sometimes it's hard. Like sometimes, you know, we're, we're talking about all this, but I've been tilted before. Jay's been tilted before. It happens. But um, there, there's lots of things you can do to work on it. Then uh, what can you do like outside of the game? Like what do you do once you're tilted, Yuki? Once I'm tilted, like and... So when, if you're fully tilted, it, it's like often kind of hard in that game. We kind of talked about like focusing on your next play and all of that. But if you're like finished your round and you're just 
fully tilted. I might like listen to music, go for a walk. I usually don't want to talk to people. I find that if I, I might talk to like one or two people and, you know, tell my bad beat story or tell my stupid mistake. But I find that like, if I focus too much on telling that story again and again, I'm almost just like fueling that tilt rather than um, letting it go. So I might, I might say it to like one or two people, get it out of my system and then just try and kind of like actually keep to myself. I, I will often like go for a walk, um, go use the restroom, drink some water, have some deep breaths, maybe have like a very small snack, that kind of a thing, and just try to shift my focus on to getting ready for my next game rather than, you know, whatever happened in the last game. <laughs> it's really funny. So what I do is a bunch of my friends already know this, but what I do in like bigger tournaments or just even like RTNs and stuff like that, not even just callings or bigger, but I go find a Starbucks and get a strawberry <laughs> frappuccino. And you know that I don't spend, I don't like to spend money at all, even on these trips or just in general. So if you see me at like a, at like a calling or like a PT with like a strawberry frappuccino, uh, you know that I'm tilted. Yeah. I, I know this about Jay. I have seen the strawberry frappuccino in action. And honestly, I think something like this is a good idea. Um, it doesn't have to be specifically that, but something that you enjoy to kind of shift your focus away from it is, is a good thing. It is helpful. You, you need to find some way to reset because that that thought process that you have of you know all the negative thinking and beating yourself up is isn't going to help you in your next game. And, and I think that's like always kind of the thing I try and remember is like this isn't helpful. This does isn't helping me win. I need to try and put this aside and and find a way to focus on what's really important, which is the rest of the tournament. Maybe, maybe I threw away a game or maybe I had a really bad turn, but can I make the rest of my turns and the rest of my tournament as good as possible? Yeah, I think that's really good. <laughs> can I tell a small story? Yeah, absolutely. So this is like, this is a while ago now. It's like 2016, it's like eight years ago, seven years ago, something like that. I'm playing a, a GP, so it's a Magic the Gathering event. I get tilted from making like a small misplay in one of like the later rounds. And so I'm tilted. So I go find a Starbucks nearby to get like a strawberry frappuccino. But the Starbucks is like a 10 minute walk away. So I do end up making this walk. The Starbucks is super busy, but I'm committed to getting this frappuccino now. So I get the frappuccino and come back to the venue. And it's like, one and a half minutes already in the time they started for the next round I get into my seat and i get my it wasn't a game loss was it a game loss it might have been a game loss i think i got the game loss for that round and i'm just like okay you know what this is still worth it for my frappuccino uh and <laughs> ended up uh you know recouping from that and then you know i actually won that match and got to continue on with the gp but it's kind of funny. It's just like, for me, the whole process of even going and getting it is like how I get un untilted. So if I like stayed there and like ended up playing tilted, maybe I still lose that match. I don't know for a fact what would have happened, but like, you know what? For me, I, I prioritize getting untilted before I sit down, even if it costs me a game loss. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the value of making good decisions is like really, really high. And, um, I think that, yeah, this idea of like having having these like rituals is important. Like th things to do when you're tilted that you know calm yourself down. Things to say to yourself when you're tilted that you know calm yourself down. Um, and, and try try preparing some of these things and and you know try 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 different things out. If there's something that you notice is effective, then you know st stick stick with it. And I think that's sort of like one of the best things you can do. There's a, one more thing I wanted to add for to this topic is the other thing you can do to not avoid tilt, but like make yourself less susceptible to tilt would be to try and put yourself in these like higher stakes environments as often as possible. So if it's like, you know, if you're getting tilted or if you, if you find yourself getting tilted at RTN level, um, play as many RTNs as possible. Like, you know, the first couple of ones going to be high pressure because it's going to be like one of your first bigger events. But if it's your like 10th or 11th RTN, it's going to be, there's going to be less pressure on that event now. So you're not going to be, you're not going to get as tilted as quickly. 
Uh, same with like PT events and like even things like callings is the more events you go to and like the more times you experience that kind of level event, the less I think you'll get tilted or even just feel the pressure of that tournament just just through sheer experience. You know, it's kind of hard to say, oh, if we're going to get, you know, nervous playing your first PT, the best thing to do is to play multiple PTs is kind of dumb. But, you know, honestly, that's the best way to get, you know, less nervous about these events is like, make sure it's not your first PT. Just just, just play as many PTs as possible. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, experience goes a long way. And I, I think that you're right, that the more you do this, the better you get at it. I'll, I'll say that generally i don't really tend to get tilted these days for the most part just from having played a bunch of events and also like sports i played a bunch of baseball i liked um i I, my favorite position was was pitcher and um there is like a lot of similar things there where you have to like baseball is such a mental sport yeah so i think there's like a lot of transfer from all those different experiences that have really helped me but um you know every once in a while it does and and for me the big one is like if it's when i lose like if it's like i lose my winning in or i get knocked out of top eight or something then i'll get super tilted and i just kind of let it go but um there's also like no more events to play after that so like you know like i'll get tilted like after the match and then that's sort of like the one spot where i don't seem to be able to help myself but but other than that I, i usually manage to keep it mostly under control my favorite times to just like, you know, talk to Yuki is when she's super tilted. And it's usually when it's like, oh, there's like no more rounds to be played. There's nothing she can do except go home. And then she'll be like, oh, why am I even here? <laughs> yeah, that, that that does sound like something I've said probably more than once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh the one of the RTNs that we played. I beat Yuki in top four. Yeah, I ended up beating Yuki in top four of one of these RTN, and she got super tilted because she lost a slightly favorable matchup, but slightly to Varian's, slightly to her own mistake, slightly to just like a lot of things not going her way, and it was, uh, I I had a lot of fun tilting Yuki. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you, you tried real hard that game. I don't feel like I got tilted during the game, but I definitely got tilted at the end. It happens, though. I yeah. guess uh, one one last thing I'll say as like a potential way to avoid tilt that works for me, I don't know if it works for everyone, is um, managing your expectations a little bit. For me, I never really view it as a given that I'm going to win an event or anything like that, even if it's like an RTN, you know, it's like a smaller event, like it's not a given that I'm going to win. It's not even a given that I'm going to top eight that event. I, I top eight a lot of RTNs these days, but you know, there's there's RTNs that I miss. I went O2 drop earlier this um, earlier this season, and and that does happen. Um, so I think like managing your expectations is a big one for me. So I like to focus not so much on like getting a certain result. I might have like a goal, like I would love to qualify for nationals, or I would love to top eight a pro tour, or, or you know, like whatever whatever that goal is. Like th- those goals are great whatever whatever they are but i try not to expect them and i try to instead focus more on like playing really well having good tournament preparation picking a good deck for the event you know like again like all the things that you can control and and really just kind of focus on that that process rather than the the process and the gameplay and execution rather than the result that i got because it's kind of the idea of like if you keep having a good process and you keep executing well at the event, the results will come. But your chance to like win or top eight a specific event are like never that good, even if you're, I don't know, even if you're the best player in the world, it's like, you're, you're, you're just not gonna make a lot of events. Like you're not gonna make top cut, you're not gonna win. You know, that's, that's just the reality of it. There's like a 350 player event, it doesn't matter how good you are, you're not that likely to win that event. Yeah, that's true. It's even if you have like an eighty percent win rate, it's kind of unlikely for you to win that event because twenty percent of the time you lose somewhere. Yeah, and often like if it's like a calling, you play like thirteen rounds, you can only lose two times. Like even just like mathematically, like you you're not gonna top like over half of the time. 
Um, <laughs> half, like way less than that, right? Yeah, yeah, over. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Well, it's like well over half. It's like well, well, well over half of the time you're not going to top. And and you know, most of us don't have an eighty percent win rate. I know I certainly don't. So yeah, I think just like setting realistic expectations and focusing more on the process and having like a really good tournament from the like I'm proud of how I played. I'm proud of my deck selection. I'm proud of how I prepared. I did everything I could. And this time it didn't go my way. Is like really, um, it helps me not get burnt out. And it also helps me not get tilted in the first place. Cause that's not, it's not, it's not about the match result. It's about playing the best that I can and, and focusing on being present. And, and that kind of feeds back into the earlier things we were talking about, about, you know, making the best decisions you can. And maybe you make a mistake, but can you make good, good decisions from there on out? Cause let me tell you this. I think everyone makes mistakes, like basically every event, like maybe not every game, but there's usually like every, I think like every event, there's usually like something that I could have done that would have been better. It might not be like a big thing every time, but there's usually like something I could have done that could have been better. Yeah, uh, that's for me, that's almost every single time is deck selection. Mm -hmm. I already know myself that I'm not going to make the best deck selection, which is the big reason why I don't like CC. (laughs) <laughs> i already know i'm gonna go in there with like the worst deck possible and then and then i'm gonna like i'll, I'll make top eight and have no chance at winning the event and be like why did i bring this deck to myself like why did i do this to myself yeah and then you'll go and do it all over again you'll, you'll drive you'll drive three hours somewhere and then do it again yeah yeah uh, i i have no problems driving or like you know, booking a flight to go play an RTN, but preparing a deck? Oh, that's so hard for me. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we all have our things we can work on. Yeah. So I think that's more or less all I have about kind of like tilt and mental game. Do you have any other thoughts on the topic before we wrap up? Um, I think that's everything we wanted to talk about. Obviously, we can like come back to something or related topics in a different episode as well, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, definitely something we can talk more about. If there's anything that we missed, you know, feel free to let us know um, in the comments or if you're a patron on the Discord as well. Um, we would we'd love to hear about that if there's like, you know, more questions related to this. I think mental game is like a, a huge topic all on its own. And um, th- there's a lot to latch on to. But, you know, hopefully this gives you a good place to get started. If you are interested in more kind of content around mental game, that's something that you've identified that you really want to work on. I just want to quickly shout out the um, Head Games podcast. It's spelled uh, Head Games, so it's like Head, H-E-A-D, G-A-M-S. And that's a podcast with Brian Gottlieb, who is a, like, he works for LSS. I think a lot of people are familiar with him in the community, but he basically sits down with, some kind of psychologist i want to say he's like a sports psychologist or something like this basically like the the guy like works with like athletes and like esports teams and stuff like that like people who are having to perform under really strenuous situations and then talks about like how to have a good performance and how to have a good mental game and how to prepare and all, all, all that kind of stuff um and i think it's like about it's it, it's old. It's about like 20, so, 20 or so episodes long, um, but it's an amazing resource. And if it's something that you're really interested in, I would highly recommend checking that out. They they do an awesome job with that topic. So there's there's a lot to dive into there if you're if you're interested in learning more about kind of mental game stuff. And and I think definitely some of the stuff we mentioned was was covered in that podcast. It's 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 a topic that people talk about. You know, like there's there's lots of um, kind of shared common knowledge about it. All right, I think that's going to wrap us up. If you want to get in touch with us, you can do so on Twitter. I'm at Ukili Bender, J is at Ueda J, or you can email us directly at onthebubble at gmail.com. Our Patreon is patreon.com slash onthebubble. Um, best of luck to you in your upcoming events, whether that's Pro Tour, next Pro Quest season, or some other event coming up. Um, best of luck. Hope it goes well. and. We'll see you all next time. Have a good night. Do you have anything for our sign-off today? Nope. Oh, I have 
yeah, this is, I guess, I guess the sign off is, it can be completely unrelated, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. but, uh, I started watching this anime, um, called Pon no Michi. Uh, it's supposed to be a Mahjong anime, or that's what I thought it was going to be, like a Mahjong anime. Mm-hmm. And I'm like on episode eight ish right now of like, and it's currently currently going on this season. The show has nothing to do with Mahjong. I'm so surprised. Okay. Like, what is it about? It's just a slice of life. Like it they don't do anything. They like they, they go on a beach and you know, just hang out on the beach and don't so play Mahjong. Just, so is it like they're technically in a Mahjong club, but it doesn't focus on that at all and just focuses on their other stuff? Yeah. I was like literally I was like, oh, you know what? This is a sick anime. I like. I like. Typically, like mahjong anime because, like, yeah. it's you know, I like gambling. And I was like expecting this to be like another mahjong anime, either like serious, like hard. I don't know. I I didn't really have expectations, but I just assumed it would be a mahjong anime. And then I'm like six, seven episodes in. I'm just like, wait, they've played like one game of mahjong so far, and none of the gr- none of the none of the players like none of the. None of the characters in the show know how to play Mahjong, essentially. Wild. It was... Um, is it good? I know it's not what you expected. Is it good? I, it's, it's a show that I wouldn't recommend to people. It's just... Nothing happens. It's just a slice of life. So, like, if you like watching nothing happening for, like, 20 minutes, it's, like, a fine show. <clears throat> but, like... A- and with Mahjong references... So it's like a slice of life where the characters sometimes talk in Mahjong slang. And that's that's the whole show. Wow. Yeah. What a concept. <laughs> it, yeah, it's actual what a concept. I love the opening uh, theme song, though. The, the opening theme song so catchy. It makes me want to click the next episode. But that's about it. <laughs> Maybe I check out the opening theme and then that's it. <laughs> this, uh, yeah. No, that's all I wanted to say. I I was just kind of like mind blown by the show. They I I thought it was a mahjong show. It's it's just not a mahjong show. <laughs> huh. They got you. Yeah, they Now they you're got, watching it. Now now I'm watching it. You're you're right. You're so right. So okay. weird. Well, if you really needed a slice of life mahjong anime where they don't actually play mahjong, Jay's got you covered. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Um, yeah, it's called Pon no Michi. It's uh, uh, would not recommend. Just, just say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, that's. I think that's about it. <laughs> good night, everyone. Have a good night.